Ah, horses. A majestic and weirdly obedient companion. We all know what a horse is. It's a domesticated, loyal, hardworking animal that doesn't stop working unless it's sleeping, eating, or dead. But this familiarity with horses hides just how truly absurd horses are. And no, I'm not going to talk about the fact that they can't breathe through their mouth, the fact that they can sleep standing up, or the fact that they only need to sleep for three hours a day. What the fuck? No, I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff. I'm going to talk about how ridiculous it is that this steroid pony is willing to work for humans. Because given their abilities and their sheer strength, they should completely ignore humans attempt to domesticate them. Like their more violent cousins, the zebra. And what are those abilities? Humans have relied on horsepower for thousands of years for a very obvious reason. Horses are really, really big and powerful. We know most large four-legged animals are much shorter than humans when they're on all fours, but they're also heavier and much longer than humans, like lions and tigers, for example. Well, horses completely break this rule. Horses on average are 1.4 to 1.7 meters tall, or 13.3 to 17.3 hands tall, for all the horse traditionalists out there. And if that seems small, remember that includes all horses, and the shorter horses tend to bring down the average by quite a bit. So we're going to be focusing on the largest horse breeds. Speaking of which, the top 5 largest horse breeds in increasing order are Standing at 1.7 meters tall, Suffolk Punch weighs in at 907 kilograms and is undoubtedly one of the largest horse breeds on earth. Keep in mind, the Siberian Tiger, the largest cat species in the world, only weighs in at 660 pounds or only 300 kilograms, which means that this horse is three times larger than the world's largest cat. We can even compare them to the world's largest land predator, the polar bear, which weighs anywhere from 300 to 800 kilograms, which means they're still smaller. The Suffolk Punch's population is currently very low due to the fact that a lot of them died out during World War I and World War II and because they're no longer very useful to humans. The Belgian Draft Horse Again, weighing in at around 907 kilograms and growing up to 1.7 meters tall. Now, shocker, the Belgian Draft Horse was bred for hard work on the farm, like plowing, and they're very good at it. So, a regular horse can only pull about 10% of its body weight, if it's dead weight, like a log or a plow. But if you add wheels, they can pull about 3 times their body weight. But that's regular horses. When we look at draft horses, the numbers get a lot more insane. For example, some draft horses can pull up to 10-15 to 15 times their own body weight. In 2014, a pair of Belgian draft horses pulled 7,700 kilograms, or 17,000 pounds. For reference, a lion can only pull about 900 kilograms, or 2,000 pounds. The Belgian draft horse might be one of the strongest horses in the world, but it's certainly not the biggest. Next on the list is the Percheron horse. This breed actually varies in size a lot, and the largest among them can go up to 1.9 meters, or 6.3 feet. These horses, however, are not used for farm work. They used to be used as coach horses, but now they're just used for shows. The next horse on the list is the Clydesdale. This horse is larger than almost all horse breeds except one. They are between 1.6 to 1.8 meters tall, and of course, they weigh around 907 kilograms and 2,000 pounds. But the famous Budweiser variant are at least 1.8 meters tall or 6 feet, and weigh up to 1,000 kilograms or 2,300 pounds. And King Lagir might be the biggest Clydesdale breed in the world, with a height of 2 meters or 6.8 feet, and weighing up to 1,338 kilograms or 2,950 pounds. And now, finally, we arrive at the Shire Horse, the largest horse breed in the world. Their height ranges from 1.7 to 1.9 meters, and they weigh around 1,088 kilograms or 2,400 pounds. They're bred primarily for work on farming and industry, and they're known for breaking several world records. In 1924, a pair of Shire horses pulled an impressive 45,359 kilograms or 100,000 pounds. That's the same weight as 166 TLC My 600 pound live people or 7.5 African bush elephants. 
In this same year, a single Shire horse pulled an impressive 26,308 kilograms or 58,000 pounds. I could keep going, but I think you get the idea. Horses are absurdly strong. A single kick from a horse is 2,000 psi, or about half the force of a crocodile bite. But what the hell could horses even eat to get so large and powerful? Horses eat grass and hay. They can also eat salt and fruits, but for the most part they survive mostly on grass and hay. They are herbivores, but on random occasions they do try to eat meat. They are solidly herbivores though. But this means that horses eat the same stuff that cows, goats, and sheep eat. So why aren't cows as strong, agile, or fast? A horse can run at 88 kilometers per hour, whilst a cow can only run at 40 kilometers per hour. This would still make cows about as fast as Usain Bolt, but it's still less than half the speed of a horse. This difference is largely due to the different ways that horses and cows digest food. You can tell how their bodies digest food differently based on how their bodies are shaped. Cows are very square shaped, not because they're fat, but because they are ruminants. And that means they have four chambers in their stomach that helps them digest grass more efficiently. And those chambers take up a lot of space, making cows a lot less agile than horses and a lot slower. But horses think cows look stupid. So instead of having an efficient ruminant build, horses have decided to have a completely unique stomach that is more like human stomachs. But if it's more like a human stomach, that also means it's way less efficient, right? Well, yes, but horses get around this problem by simply eating more grass. So horses get to be lean and strong while still only eating grass. And that's not even where the benefits stop. Because horses are less efficient at turning plants into meat, they are not used for factory farming. Horses avoided being caged with their relatives in the billions and being slaughtered every day by simply being less efficient than cows. If you've ever watched any animal channel on YouTube or a documentary about Africa, or even just animals that evolved in Africa, you may get the impression that this continent is basically the most overpowered Master League server. And that's all true. When you look at things like the elephant species, the world's largest terrestrial mammal, or the fastest animal on earth, the tallest animal on earth, and of course, the deadliest animal on earth. And that is just the large animals. The insects are a completely different story, from termites that build giant mounds, to locusts that attack in the billions. Also having the world's largest snail, worm, and deadliest bees. And a good way to test how powerful these animals are is by seeing how invasive they are to other continents. Like the Africanized honeybee in the Americas, which was introduced to the Americas by Brazil in 1950 to bolster their honey production. The bees ended up spreading over the entirety of South America and even reached the United States. We also have hippos introduced to the Americas by Pablo Escobar. He brought four hippos in the late 70s and let them stay in his estate in Colombia. They ended up staying there after his death. And thanks to their aggressive nature and lots of incest, their population has now reached over 100 individuals. And not to mention the most powerful animal on earth. You know them, you are them, homos. Specifically, homo sapiens, with homo meaning human in Latin and sapien meaning wise or astute. Which is quite fitting because human intelligence is the reason why we are at the top of the food chain. Sure, what we choose to do with that intelligence is sometimes questionable, but there's no doubt that humans are the most powerful and thus the most invasive species on Earth, living everywhere on Earth and even having visited the moon. And remember, the reason why invasive species are considered dangerous is because they deplete a local environment of some of its resources and cause many species in a specific region to become endangered or go extinct. Humans don't cause the death or extinction of one or more species in one region on earth. Humans have caused a population decline in the entire animal kingdom. Since 1970, humans have caused a 60% decrease in veritable species. And in that same time period, the human population has more than doubled. Humans are the absolute zenith of species on earth, and they originate in Africa. I think you get the idea. Africa is pretty OP, which is why it's so surprising to learn that horses not only did not come from Africa, but that their family, equines, come from North America and that they've become a dominant and flourishing species in Africa, not once, but twice. Once, 55 million years ago, they evolved in North America and spread by the Barian Land Bridge to the rest of the world, becoming all the world's donkeys, horses, and zebras, managing to survive in the Old World and establishing vast territories in Sub-Saharan Africa. 
And the second time was after World War I, when Germany lost all of its territorial claims of Namibia. And the German horse farmers decided to release their horses into the African wilderness. The horses, instead of dying out, ended up surviving for many generations, and they're still there to this day. This makes horses one of the few animals that have managed to survive and thrive in the most hardcore continent, not once, but twice. And before I end the video, one more fun fact about horses. The giant horse cock weighs over 11 pounds. Anyways, that's it. Uh, please subscribe so I can actually get monetized on this channel. And be sure to follow me on my Twitch. Link in the description. Bye.